Hi everyone. What we'll do is we'll just wait um, another minute just to, for anyone else that's going to log in. In the meantime, you'll see a Q&A button at the bottom if you just want to log any um, questions that you might have. And then what we'll do is we'll throw out, um, we'll kind of cover frequently asked questions and then cover any questions that aren't answered that are in that list. We might just make a start. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, so we are the College of Law. Um, my name is Natasha Adams. I'm one of the coordinators here um, that coordinates profs. We also have Sharon Joe, who is the Director of Programs. Hi everyone, welcome to us. Let's wait one more little moment. No. So basically you've come here because you're currently um, start off completing your law degree. Um, not sure which year, but you might be in year three or four. Um, what I suggest, um, yeah, I've got some questions coming through, which is great. Um, keep uh, um, keep logging them. If there's any issues, just log it in the questions, um, question and answer kind of portal. So basically, um, you've done nearly finished your law degree or in your year three. Um, and the next step in order to be admitted to the bar or the New Zealand bar is to complete profs. Profs is um, the practical element. So currently you're studying the, the theory side. Um, profs is an opportunity to put those um, skills into practice. For example, um, interviewing a client, it could be writing and drafting a memo. Let me know if you want to add anything as you go. Okay. Well, there, there are a lot of, of um, practical skills that you're going to learn as part of profs. What you've learned essentially at university is about the law essentially and relevant facts to the law, materiality and what's involved. Um, but wrapped around that in real life are a lot of other factors that are dealt with in a practical legal environment. We're here to help support you on that transition essentially. Yes, awesome. What I might do is just bring up the PowerPoint and we'll kind of go through um, basic, a majority of the frequently asked questions that we get. So one moment. So we kind of covered what is PROFs. When can you start? As soon as you finish your final law exam. Um, you don't necessarily need to have graduated yet, um, as long as you finish that last exam. Um, and if for any reason um, you need to start before you get your results, that's okay, as long as you um, do pass that final exam. So just by way of clarification, there may be some people that are doing their law degree and another a conjoint um, degree as well. The regulations require as long as you have completed all of your LLB requirements or LLB degree requirements, then that is sufficient. As long as you've set your last exam, um, you can enrol, but once you do get your results, obviously you're going to need to provide confirmation of that. Cool, and next question. We, um, so in 2019, we've got a bit of a new course structure, um, and so what is included in that is four electives. Um, and this is a great opportunity if you are going into a specialised area. So the electives that we're covering now are criminal, family, in-house practice, and corporate. Um, also, it's good to note that there are no written exams um, as part of PROFs, um, and also that we have four different kind of, um, what would you call it, delivery options that we um, offer. And I'll cover that in the next slide just to give, give more of a breakdown. Is there anything you want to do? Um, well, we've just seen um, that we've got one question from one of our guests who have asked us to talk about the difference between part-time and full-time options um, in terms of the workload. So maybe this is an appropriate time to cover that. Um, essentially, we've got the same course content um, but you can either do that um, part-time, in other words, it's specifically designed to be done while you're working, um, and that is online, a blended version of online and on-sites. During the online um, perspective, you can roughly expect to be dealing with roughly 26 to 27 hours a week online. So it will require maybe working in the evenings and, and in the weekends, 
for that very finite period of your life. So to summarise, that's an 18-week course. For those who potentially have um, spare time and perhaps they don't um, have a job yet, um, they're wanting to get profs out and done first, then you can do the same profs course, but obviously in a, in a more condensed um, time frame of 13 weeks full time. Um, it's designed on the basis that you're going to be available roughly 8.30 to 5.00. Um, so therefore we wouldn't recommend that you have continuous study or doing your dissertation or anything else while doing that, but it's certainly another option. It really just depends on suiting what's best for your lifestyle and current circumstances. Hope that's helped, uh, Safa. Yep. Right. The other thing is we, um, for the on-site um, workshops that we hold, so each um, the evening or the daytime, whatever structure you go into or whatever mode. Um, we hold, hold them in five main locations, so Auckland, Hamilton, Wellington, Christchurch and Dunedin. So it's just important to note um, that if you live outside of those areas, you will need to, um, just for those set days that you need to come in, you'll need to go to those five main centres. Uh, we are having um, some individuals who potentially, um, whatever, in terms of their life circumstances, maybe they end up relocating, for example. Maybe they've got a job opportunity that comes in Wellington, but they live in Auckland. Um, the transferability in terms of our profs course allows you to continue your online phase, for example. You don't need to be in a particular location as long as you're in front of a laptop. Um, but let's say that you've still got some outstanding on-sites to do as the remainder of that course. You can then continue whatever's left, maybe advocacy, um, that you just need to complete, in which case you can just link in with another on-site uh, on in Wellington according to um, set dates. Um, so there is a level of flexibility that we do try to work quite hard um, to make it easy as possible for you to actually do profs within the confines of the regulations. Yep, sounds good. Uh, why is, oh, sorry, this is, um, actually I'll bring it, go back to the subjects. So these are the subjects that the course covers. Um, on your right hand side, you'll see the electives. So you'll choose one of those. On the left hand side is all the subjects that you'll need to um, be doing as part of profs. And this is a great opportunity for you to um, learn more or kind of go further in some study areas that you've already chosen or you're about to go into. Great, we still see some more questions coming up, which is great. Yeah, so, um, I'm wondering whether to, maybe we can just go back yeah. to the other course of, uh, yeah. questions later. And just while we're on the slide that uh, Tash has provided you about the, I suppose, course structure, for lack of a better, uh, better expression. So we've already talked about these online phases and on-site phases of the course. So you, you've got your three on-site phases where your skills are interviewing, negotiation, and mediation, and advocacy. They're going to be on set dates throughout whatever the 13 or 18 course option is that you're going to be undertaking. In the online phase, then you're all going to be undertaking um, work in three main practice areas. And for those that are familiar a little bit with what's out there in private practice, the standard three main departments that you tend to work in in a law firm are commercial, property, and litigation. Now, throughout your time as a grad and as you um, embark on legal practice, there are going to be some transferable practical legal skills that you're going to be apl applying irrespective of what area of law that you're going to be in. And that's the whole point of this course, to actually learn how to apply these online skills in the context of those main compulsory departments that you'd be working in, in that notional or imaginary law firm setting. And then the elective subject really gives you the opportunity to get a taster of what the other elective practice areas may be like um, in the context of either corporate, in-house practice, criminal or um, family. So um, there's something for everyone in there, but know that it's all with a view to preparing you for um, transferable skills when you come out. Okay, so cool. um, so then we just move on now, Tash? Yeah. Just see how we go? Yeah. Keep those questions coming in. Oh, if you've logged in late, um, you can log any questions in the Q&A button at the bottom, just for those. So um, why would you want to stay with us? Oh, let's share and cover this one. Well, I mean, and obviously we're only as good as our last course and so forth, but clearly we are one of the, the um, 
uh, main uh, providers of profs in New Zealand. We're a large um, organisation, part of the college group. And um, as such, um, since the 1970s in Australia, and we're, we're part of Asia and beyond now as well, um, our um, signature is practical-based learning. So we're not talking about esoteric points of law or anything like that from university anymore. It's very much skills-based, learning by doing with the support of some very um, experienced and practitioners. So uh, rather than going in, in necessarily the order of this particular slide, um, there are um, course options, a variety and lots of different ways to suit your best circumstances, um, which then will allow you to, as part of the elective choices, to try areas of law that may help you um, potentially in your future career development. Um, if we can just move to the next slide. There's flexibility in a lots of range of views. Now, when we get to answer some of these questions that have already come in, um, we can describe um, some examples of the way in which you can combine, essentially, the different um, on-site options and so forth, depending on what's best for you. Um, we do know that it's going to be a little bit of a, a, a paradigm shift. So from the academic environment, that transition is actually... Um, going to be new no matter who you are, and we've all been through it as experienced practitioners. And so what it is is um, having the opportunity to learn to apply those skills in a really safe environment. And we're quite passionate about what we do here at the college, and you will find that as you work through the various practice areas, you'll get supportive feedback from instructors, instructors based on the work in the context of workshops. Um, it's an opportunity to link with other colleagues but, and make new friends, but also get to be exposed to a range of really senior, um, uh, very experienced practitioners who can um, assist you on your way. We're also quite well known for our um, particular materials that we give you that help prepare you in a targeted fashion for the particular um, assignments that you'll be undertaking. Um, Tasha, I'm just wondering, did you want to perhaps go through some of the questions yes. now? Okay, lovely. Now, continuing on from that theme of flexibility, and I'm just going to move closer to the camera and be able to read that, there are some questions that are along um, a similar vein. Um, but, for example, on the particular aspects of study and the different options, remember when I talked about online roughly 26 to 27 hours a week for an 18-week course, um, one of your um, colleagues has said, um, does the 27 hours a week of study for the evening part-time courses include the on-site study per week or is that additional? Um, good question. I know that it can, it can sound a little bit overwhelming when you're thinking about hours. Essentially, just to let you all know, we're heavily prescribed by the regulatory body. The Council of Legal Education actually prescribed what the notional hours of learning should be. So it's not as if we've plucked um, out from the air that we're going to actually make you all work for a certain amount of time. It's, it's very heavily prescribed and for good reason. So within the confines of those regulations, if you think about it, for an 18-week course um, online, you're going to be working Essentially, there'll be maybe one assignment per week that you can think of. You might be studying with property, doing feedback work leading up to an assessment, um, and that may take you know maybe the first three weeks or so forth, and then you move on to commercial. Equally, you get um, a couple of activity modules of activities, and then that helps prepare you for an assessment, which is based on a portfolio or the range of your work. Now, the reason that why I've actually mentioned that is there is an element of ongoing work that you're going to need to do. So it's not like a download and dump, as um, like the university environment, but provided you keep up with your time, um, timed um, assignments, you will be fine. Yes, that is something that you need to do potentially in your own time around your other working commitments if you have any, but the on-sites then are actually discrete components of the course that actually fit in with your rest of your course. So if it's a day on site, you might be doing online assignments and then at a particular point, let's say weeks eight and nine, you'll come together for maybe three days in a row and you'll be doing interviewing for three days or maybe negotiation for three days, then slipping back into your online with that pattern. Equally, if you're doing an evening course, that's 18 weeks, you're still doing what everyone else is doing during the day or, or doing your online study, but it just so happens that for those that can't make day on sites, they will be doing interviewing perhaps, like um, Tasha said, in terms of being flexible. Instead of three days in a row, it may be your Wednesday evening option is one Wednesday is interviewing one workshop, the second workshop is the following week, the next Wednesday, 
and the week after that you've got your performance assessment while all the way down the line are other online um, assignments or, or timetable work that you may be doing. Um, in the 13 week environment clearly that's more structured because you're doing the same work but in a more concentrated area of time um, and so that will be exactly the same but clearly obviously what you'd normally be doing in 18 weeks it's just like contracting that which will mean that you've got more potential more assignments that you're doing that you're turning around in a quicker space of time clearly if you've got the full time hours to do that there shouldn't be a problem um, with doing that it's probably important to note that um, from the start of the course you'll know all your due dates and all your workshop dates so you can um, put it into your diary kind of look the few weeks ahead um, and so you know what's happening what's coming up um, so it's important to note so then it doesn't seem um, yeah, so you know kind of how to plan. Just thinking about the on-site, there's another question, yes. for the on-site days, do assessments take place on those days? What happens if you cannot make those days? That's a really good question. So can keep those good questions coming, I'm sure that everyone's appreciating it. So essentially there are set days for on-site, so as Tash said, that you should know in advance what where those particular days sit in, in terms of your 18 or 13 week course. Um, on-site attendance under the Council of Legal Education's regulations say, it's mandatory, so it's not a matter of your own convenience. You must attend and fully participate yourself. Um, it's just like getting married, you have to turn up at the time and, and be there yourself. But around those regulatory restrictions, essentially we've got so many different rolling course days that we are allowing you to lift out, as it were, if your work is saying that you, they can't spare you for the three days of interviewing anymore, you can say, you can contact us at the college and say, actually, I can't attend and view anymore. Are there any other options? And since we would say, well, we've got these other course dates further down the line, you can lift out those and transfer them elsewhere. If you're sick, let's say that you don't finish it on site because you've got the flu, second out of the third days, then you would need to actually transfer those two, days two and three in another intake to make that up, but still can remain with your remaining intake with the remainder of your course requirements. So there are lots of different combinations we can. Um, it's a matter of communication and allowing us to work with you, and provided there's space and availability, we will try to assist. There's another question here in terms of William. Um, you said in relation to the 14 days that you'd require to be be present, is that going to be continuous or scattered? Now that depends on the course structure that you choose because clearly if we're talking about the evening courses, um, those 14 days are scattered and it's almost like a, not necessarily every weekly evening, but certainly there will be components for that you're doing every three weeks, there'll be interviewing, then you'll go online and another batch of negotiation and three consecutive um, evenings one week after the other. In the day on sites, there tends to be a pattern. So for most, not all, there are course structures where potentially halfway through the course, you've got six days in a row, three days interviewing, three days negotiation, and then usually towards the end of the course, week 17 or 18, or week 12 or 13, depending on which course structure you choose, you will complete the course with advocacy which is a lot of fun and um, it's nice to finish on a high by actually going through with all of the friends that you've made along the way. Um, so it, it's a matter of perhaps considering the options. Sometimes it can be like a pick and mix lolly um, scramble for some people, but um, don't feel that you need to um, agonise over it. If you need to actually find out more, come and contact us and we can guide you on what best suits in terms of the facing of the course. Um, just wondering if there's anything else that may be similar that anyone else has mentioned. Um, I think so I've kind of now for the on-site days, do the assessments take place on those days? The answer is yes and no. Obviously, when you're doing the online um, phase, you will do online assessments, so they're not exams. They are a portfolio of your online work that you're going to be submitting at timetable deadlines. For the on-site, we are actually having you learn to apply the skills in a workshop environment, learn by doing, that will help prepare you for an assessment. So yes, there will be um, allocated times that you turn up on that assessment day, you only need to turn up for that and then the rest of the day is free. Um, but clearly, um, there would have to be good reason if you cannot make an assessment um, date as scheduled. Again, we're guided by the regulations that the council require us to administer. So it would only be for certain grounds that you can, what we call, defer or shift the assessment deadline, which could be through illness, sickness, um, medical certificates required, bereavements or, or stress or similar. Um, 
but generally most students do find that once they know the dates up front, that's something you can plan on um, as long as you realise that you should keep that day entirely free until you know what your date is because obviously that won't be assigned to you until you attend the workshops proper. Um, that would be the only constraint, but um, for most people you would be able to see that. Um, in terms of grading, yes, now I guess that coming from university you're probably all worried about what, what does it take to get through and, and I suppose that we are different from um, university in the sense that the, um, um, the terminology, the de the, what the wording is used by the council is that you're either competent in a skill or not yet competent. So it's, uh, it's a matter of there is no bell curve um, Marking just like in, uni in university where only a certain percentage of people uh, pass and X, X, Y, Z. Here, if you're all going to be merit, fantastic, you're on merit and you pass. So essentially there, are, there is a scale of if you're competent, then that is someone that is in a, knowing that you're going to be a newly admitted graduate in supervised legal practice, you're going to be not perfect, but knowing that you're in supervised practice, are you at a level where we would say that that would be satisfactory for someone in those circumstances? Now, when you meet um, merit, that's an even higher level, which if you are meeting a supervising partner, that they do very little or need to do very little to change perhaps the, the online work that you've submitted or from a performance setting that there's very little that they'd need to actually guide you with. Not yet competent doesn't mean that you'll never get there. As I said, there are reassessment procedures under the regulations that allow you to have another go. Um, where there, there are various um, support procedures that we would put in place to um, help prepare you for that next stage. And it's very much just learning by making your um, mistakes in this environment to help prepare you for what's likely to be faced outside. Another um, question that somebody's asked about is, um, it's an interesting one, um, without further information perhaps we, we'd just be able to give you a very general answer here, but um, someone has said that they're not a permanent resident of New Zealand but wondering if they're eligible to practice in New Zealand after finishing the course. So I, I detect um, from that particular individual that perhaps you may have gone and uh, done your degree perhaps overseas, if that is the case in order to be able to um, be eligible to for profs, you need to have completed all of your New Zealand LLB requirements. Um, provided you've done that, yes, by all means, you can, you can, whether you're a New Zealand resident at the time or not, you can actually undertake this course. Um, whether you get funding for that through StudyLink is another question, but certainly um, you would be surprised at the types of situations where we've got grads that finish university, do a little bit of a taster overseas, um, we had someone that was actually working for the military and got posted to Afghanistan partway through in all their face, which was quite bizarre, but they managed to do profs. Not that I'm recommending that everyone go out and do that. <laughs> um, but you have some people that are working at The Hague or maybe they're looking for work in Australia, that they do their online work while overseas, but they know that their on-sites, um, their options are that they fly home. And because interviewing and negotiation is in one block, they could choose that go back and then come back to finish off with advocacy. So there are ways around it. If you are an overseas degree holder, then clearly you need to go through another channel or a layer where you go to the regulatory body and you say, here are my qualifications. Can you now assess them and tell me whether or not this, um, I can actually take the pre-admission course or are there any extra additional layers from a qualification point of view that you need to actually do before doing or before coming to us essentially. Um, so I hope that's helped uh, whoever you are um, um, that's asked that question. Um, can you please describe the in-house practice ele um, elective in more detail? For example, would it be suited to somebody wanting to join an association such as a workers' union or legal areas legal counsel? Um, interesting. Um, thanks for that question, Joseph. Now, obviously, um, we are aware that the attraction of being in-house counsellors is a growing phenomenon. Essentially, not everyone is wanting to do profs just to practice it or, or be admitted as a private lawyer or a private legal practice. Um, some people are uh, graduates that take on roles where they don't even need to necessarily be admitted, but their employers value the particular transferable skills that you're needing to actually do in that environment. For in-house counsel roles, that can be um, in NGOs or it could be in more regulatory government positions 
or it could be a more corporate in-house role, or as you've suggested, potentially, that you're wanting to um, and acting on behalf of a, a union, potentially. The focus of um, the course materials, again, as, as I'm telling you about, is the transferable skill sets that are part of the regulatory function. So uh, without too much um, in detail, essentially it's um, things like fact analysis, problem solving, writing and drafting, ethical professional conduct, and all of those things. Within an in-house practice area, you're going to be exposed to knowing what the um, pressures are likely to be, where on the one hand, you're being obviously employed on the basis of an in-house lawyer, where you answer all to potentially boards of directors or higher senior management, um, who are obviously looking at business imperatives and asking you as an employed lawyer to help them achieve their goals. And at the same time, for, the, for those of you at university, you'd be well aware of the legal ethical constraints that you have as a practitioner. So there's a far more um, heavy um, issues on that nature with privacy and so forth in an in-house environment. So that's the kind of nature of what you're likely to face in the in-house role. Um, even, even if it's not directly um, for a particular area that you're going to be involved in, because it's transferable things that we're talking about, that's likely to stand anyone in good stead to know, relatively speaking, what you're likely to be encountering in the, in the marketplace in those types of roles. So I hope that's helped you. What time of year is the right to apply? That's very good. I'm, I'm asking from overseas in Ghana. Well, welcome, Ghana. And what happens next after the training? Right, so um, a, relative, a related um, corollary is um, what practical help is there to connect newly qualified to real opportunities? All right, the first thing is in terms of the right year to apply. Now, for many of you, as soon as you complete any university LLB requirement studies, we would be saying that is certainly the time that you should start really thinking about what it is that you want to achieve. Um, we would be wanting to talk to you as soon as possible, essentially, so that the earlier you know what you want to do, the earlier our chances are of accommodating you wanting to have the um, option of your choice and the particular time and phasing of that. Um, obviously, you'll realise that we do have um, uh, law firms that are employers that put their graduates through um, equally, so um, it's a matter of making sure that to enhance your chances that you contact us early. And it's also to give certainty um, in terms of particular offerings um, that are only uh, that are going to be confirmed as proceeding. Um, a, a, apart from that, if you were an overseas, um, you, you're a graduate, but you just happen to be overseas at the time. Following the conclusion of the PROFS course, and I assume that that's what you mean by next after training, um, you'd be looking to apply for admission. Um, now, you don't need to be an admitted practitioner to necessarily get a job, so it could be, you know, one, one you get a job and then you seek to be admitted, or one you could be um, going to be um, um, admitted in a particular um, ceremony, but you're actually still seeking guidance on perhaps the best way to find a job. There's no um, regulatory requirement as such for the college to place anyone in work placement as such because, um, and, I, and the reason I mention that is in Australia, for admitted uh, graduates, that's a requirement as part of uh, pre-admission that they have to have work experience that is assisted by the provider of the training. In New Zealand, we don't have that. We don't have that requirement. But we do have, and for those of you who aren't aware, we have coldlaw.ac.nz. On our website, we do have a jobs notice board. We do make um, that known and available. And often employers themselves ask us, are you able to advertise particularly for intakes in Wellington, because they're a Wellington employer, to let any graduates know um, if they're looking for jobs that we're, we're actually um, um, posting a particular job opening on our, on our notice board. Um, I think that's probably my, my initial answer there, Tasha, and if you are seeking further information, just down offline, just contact us if we can help you with any further um, We've got on the screen our email address, so inquiries at colorado.nz. If you'd like to apply um, with us, the best thing is to go to our website, um, and then from there you can see the different dates. We have all the dates on our website up until about a year's time. So we find that November is a really popular time um, if you want to start applying for profs. So we recommend to enrol now. If there's any reason why you've, say you've enrolled um, for the November intake, um, but then you find that maybe you've gone overseas for a few months, there is an opportunity for you to then transfer to a later intake um, at no cost, as long as it's done before the course starts 
or within the first week. And so um, we recommend you enrolling. Um, there's no harm. You're not going to lose out on anything. And there's no deposit required either. So yes. highly recommend yeah. that you do that. We just want to make sure you get a place because yeah. November is really popular. Um, and so is there any kind of other questions? We've um, roughly covered everything. Um, let us know now. Um, if not, um, if you feel like you've got su sufficient amount of um, details and information from us and now you've got up on the screen um, where to log your questions or ask questions, then feel free to, you can go now. Um, if there's anything else, I don't want to hold you back if you need to um, head off, but welcome to stay on and we can answer um, any more specific questions that come, come up. Absolutely, and thanks for taking the time to come and join us for this session. Um, often we find that um, it's only when you start thinking about these um, details that perhaps other things come up after the session. So if that is the case, feel free to contact us at any time afterwards and we'd be happy to help. Cool, thank you. Thanks a lot. But if you do have more questions, feel free to ask. <laughs> That's great. And if you are here and you're working through your um, uh, final, sem final semester, and I, I take it that many of you may be having your end of um, semester one exams coming up, very best of luck for that. I hope that all helps. Um, it is worth it. You do get there in the end, and I well remember what it's like in, in my final year. Um, and so um, it's not a matter of just thinking, okay, phew, now I'm finished and I just have to get this thing um, called profs out of the way. Actually, your career will start with profs. And so we're really looking forward to helping you make that very first, very significant, important step in your new career. All right, cool. I can see some people are still on the line, but there's no new questions come through, so feel free to log any more. And, 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 and um, if you just drop us a line as well, just generally from what university that you're currently in, it's always an interesting for us to know uh, potentially um, uh, from a regional uh, perspective any particular interest in what we can assist you with there in, in that sense. In each of our areas, we have a uh, focus on the on-site instructors being locally based and they tend to be quite um, uh, senior, highly regarded in their particular fields. So for example, we have um, in Auckland, uh, we have many um, um, practitioners in in-house, in for example, from Spark, or, or we have the president of President of Islands, who is the president of the organisation overseeing all in-house council that are involved in our course. Um, equally, in terms of um, corporate and so forth, we've got large uh, numbers of uh, ex uh, former partners of law firms, tribunal members. Um, the, the, the range, the list and range goes on um, and equally in your local areas as well we have people who are very um, very heavily involved in the legal practice in their local regions as well. Um, so if we, we, if we get to see you or you get to see the college at any of our career fairs or, or any of those um, particular events at uni university, we work very closely with the university reps there um, and um, obviously if there's any way that we can give you more targeted information, please let us know because we're really, um, we're, we're really happy to help you in that regard. One more last minute question, how long does it take to process an application? Well, I'm going to hand that very important question over to Tash um, in, in terms of enrolment. Is that something that, um, that yeah. the focus of that question looks to be? Yeah, I don't think it would take, it doesn't take that long. Um, once you go online, um, there is a couple of things that you'll need to provide, like your ID, um, but that can be done at a later time if you can't do it at that moment. Um, but it doesn't take too long, maybe five to ten minutes max. That's great. And, and obviously there are some, um, uh, I suppose, uh, further um, information that you will be required to provide um, later when you turn up to your first on-site with us, which is pretty easy. Um, and that's just to verify your, your ID from a regulatory point of view. But other than that, it's very painless. It's just a matter of going methodically through the handbook, then filling out the application form itself, which will require some um, mandatory TEC or Tertiary Education Commission information. So um, that would be the only reason for the length of the enrolment application itself. But other than that, um, we always are welcoming um, the opportunity just to see any further questions that you have prior to committing. So if it's just one final thing, 
give us a call. Mm-hmm. If it's something that you are unable to submit a scanned copy of something until later, but you're still really keen to get your application in, if there's a constraint in any way, just feed it through and we'll try to help you as, as much as possible. Um, and uh, then it's just a matter of a, a confirmation of receipt of your application um, being sent from us to you, and closer to the time of the start of the course, then you will see further information that's more on the relevant need-to-know basis at that point. The other thing is that you do receive materials from us, so we will be giving you a hard copy orientation pack um, prior to the start of the course, um, and that's something for you to take away. We often find that people obviously um, then just want to, they can just write over it and, and have it there ready if you are then going to be studying and you're moving around or um, going to be um, going away for the weekend, you do get some resources that you can take with you. And equally, you've got your laptop or wherever to do the online phase at your will, um, you know, provided you've got that technology there, then you'll, you'll be absolutely fine. Um, so it's very, very straightforward um, in terms of making that first step. I don't know if there is a, a slight um, typo for this particular question, question um, but what I'm going to do is just assume that the question is related to a GDLP. Um, we, we have profs, obviously, as one of, of our um, core offerings, and that's what we're known to be about. Um, and um, we also offer now a uh, graduate diploma in legal practice, which is a GDLP. Um, and we also, just for information for those of you who are not aware, we're also recently launching new applied master's courses. And perhaps one of the things that we didn't mention before is that the elective choices that we are giving you a taster of in PROS um, similarly um, will eventually um, lead in due course because obviously we're launching um, masters in wills and estate and family, but we're likely to also to branch out and offer that in in-house practice and criminal and so forth as well. So there's that kind of continuity that you're likely to face once you understand the college um, signature of how you learn in that practical form. But going to this particular specific question about a graduate diploma, what that essentially is, is that um, for those of you who are thinking to um, perhaps add a string to your bow from a career perspective and say, right, I've just done cross, what else is there that I can offer? is that um, once you've done PROFs, you can just do a few extra elements with 12 weeks of work experience and other uh, four self-reflectors, plus PROFs, and that will get you to a graduate diploma in legal practice. Um, yes, it starts in Auckland, and it's uh, in terms of a time frame, I don't think that there is an actual end, end time frame, no. is there, Tash? It's just a matter of going through those mandatory um, course prescriptions and fulfilling the criteria. If you do have specific questions in regards to um, GDLP, then feel free to email inquiries and we can answer specific questions. But um, this session is more focused on profs, so um, those that kind of specialise in the area, um, um, yeah, they'll have all those answers to those questions. Yeah, if, yeah. if, you, if you just um, feed it to um, www.colaw.ac.nz, um, we'll be able to deal with you on that more directly as well with the people concerned. Are there any further questions about profs though? And that's the, the, our final, I suppose. We're running out of time now, so if, if there's any final question, please do quickly pop that through by way of chat. Are we getting there? Yeah, nothing's come through. Should we leave it there? I think so. I think so. Um, you know, if, if anyone um, does want to, to um, contact us um, directly, you do know the channel, but otherwise, again, thanks so much for making your time and for your interest. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Thanks See very you. much, everyone. Bye. Bye.